Hello everybody. I am Dr. Farhan Zameer, an adjunct professor and academic specialist at Biotechnica Bangalore. For today, we would have an interesting discussion on the career opportunities which have been available for graduates and postgraduates in bioinformatics. So let's dive in. When we look into the career opportunities in bioinformatics, especially for people who have finished their B.Tech or B.Sc or M.Tech or M.Sc, so the following are the certain options. Now, apart from that, if by any chance, if you perceive a higher degree like a Ph.D. or a postdoc, there are much more opportunities. The, the entire preamble, the background of this particular presentation is covering up the career opportunities with a, uh, with, with a single degree, that is bachelor's degree, then moving on to a double degree, a, uh, a master's degree, then a third degree, which is a postdoctoral, you know, PhD, and then we will look into an additional specialization that is called as postdoctoral studies. So before I understand the career opportunities, I want you people to look into the numerals and the graphical representation of what is the extrapolation of the global bioinformatic market and what is the expectation of the, the, the revenue and the market availability and the projection from 2022 to 2029. So when you look into this particular projection, so the projection is very, very, you know, exponential. Now this brings up a lot of hopes and uh, you know uh, this is from an authenticated source which is called as data bridge market research they do a lot of statistical research in understanding what is the scope of a particular subject in a given period of time now this is an amalgamation of data which talks about north america europe asia specific south america and middle east africa now this is a global trend now when we talk about the global trend you need to make sure that bioinformatics is not just having a boom in India, but however, globally, it has a market of $34.35 billion by the year 2029. So this is a good news. The good news is, you know, you having a career in bioinformatics, at least for the next 10 years, you have a major boom. Now, let us see what exactly an other a statistical entity would talk upon a data uh, intello which is an other firm which talks about the types of technologies which can bring in a revolution in the market now the global bioinformatic market and its value per million dollars us dollars has been speculated here and the different types of services technologies and applications are listed in this particular slide now this also becomes a very important uh, background for you people to understand in which subject you have a much you know greater sc uh, scope now when i look into certain uh, scope in technology and services so here knowledge management tool bioinformatic platforms and bioinformatic services are into one domain and however this refers to you know i have a company and then through a company i'm just outsourcing a particular kind of a data but however, in terms of application, I see a larger scope. Now, when I talk about bioinformatics, you are trying to bring in the biology and the computation together. So you're bringing in the biology and the data sciences together. You're bringing in the biology and various other technologies such as AI, machine learning, deep learning, everything together on a single platform. So this means to say you have a larger scope. Now, these scopes would cover metabolomics, molecular phylogenetics, transcriptomics, proteomics, and such uh, many more technologies. Now, remember, if you are able to come up with new, new innovative ideas and then try to put them together and bring an application out of it, so this would be a greater advantage. So here, you need to divide yourself into three different domains. One, you need to, uh, you need to be a, a good bio, you know, uh, biologist. 
then with that biological knowledge you should know computational systems and with that computational systems putting biology together you need to bring in a technology which can have a greater implication with a, a significant you know applications now when i again look into the sector wherein there are two major comp uh, com compartments in in bioinformatics so here one is the scientific discipline which has been linked into bioinformatics and the, the second one is the support system which is required to run bioinformatics so there are two major things so one is the support system and the other the other one is the scientific discipline which is actually required now when i come on to scientific disciplines as we have already noted here so you have molecular biology you have genetics biochemistry biophysics evolution agriculture sciences mathematics and statistics pharmaco pharmaceutical sciences and then omics when i talk about omics you know this can refer to transcriptomics genomics epigenetics metabolomics all this is into one baggage which is called as omics studies now this will actually support the the scientific part of the bioinformatics but however bioinformatics as we know cannot work without computers so i am looking into the data through the eyes of computers so when i look into the uh, data then com computer science becomes a very important stream information technology data management system and then various kinds of computational resources has to be combined with the biology and hence i can have two different kinds of jobs the first job is with the the science discipline itself and the second job is to manage or to support the science which has been actually been executed so with this i have four major segregations or four major clusters the four major clusters which will provide job opportunities for uh, you know graduates and post graduates in bioinformatics would be segregated into these four domains one you can go into academics the second one as a research the third one could be certain companies and the fourth one would be you know you can become an entrepreneur so these are the four major kinds of clusters in which you can you know develop upon and build a career with bioinformatics now let us try to see each sector and let us look into what are the various designation and scope and the approximate you know income what i can generate per month with this kind of a sector let us first start with academics now when i talk about academics remember i told you if you are a bsc student with bioinformatics or an btech student with bioinformatics you cannot expect something great to happen now this is because you have various clusters you have various cadres and you know initially when you start with a single degree okay the job title would be somewhere as a data analyst and if you are an you know uh, uh, a bsc with computer science then you can still work as a data coder now if you know both biology and computer science that uh, that is it then you can become an interpreter and, or a data technician now with a, a given source of you know time and given source of experience then maybe if you are able to get up with your your master degree or if you are already have been acquiring knowledge with various other certification programs then you could be promoted to the next position which is called as data researcher now with data researcher you need to work for around 2 to 3 years and with proficient knowledge then you can become a, a data science specialist and with an experience of around 8 to 10 years then you can be regarded as a faculty at data sciences so this would be the clustering component or the various kinds of categorization which takes place and this can happen at both government sector and private sector now with after you know with academics uh, this is what we can achieve now moving on for, forward now the next domain is it with the research now in research you have two major domains one research taking place at a public or research taking place at a private system now public includes a university or an institute wherein a research has been carried out or the second domain wherein i have a private company in a private company apart from the production line you also have an research and development center and you can still work as an bioanalyst in that particular sector so you can after your bachelor's you can still go as a bioanalyst or you can go as a research data analyst 
Now, if you are good with a small component of coding and biology, you know, this would be an other categorization which could be created. This is called a research programmer. And if you are well versed with the current applications and various platforms, research curator is a very good uh, job title to start for an MSc or a MTech graduate. Now, once with, you know, PhD or so, you can have, you know, researcher, data sciences, or you can have an opportunity as, you know, clinical data researcher. Now, and other three to five years of experience with uh, the, the present CADA, then you can get promoted into a specialist in data sciences, or you can become a scientist or a faculty at data sciences using bioinformatic domains. Now, that was with the Research Institute. Now, to be very specific in terms of companies, all companies, very specifically all pharma companies and data curation companies, they are looking into people who can put up biological data onto the um, domain or they create a communication between the domain knowledge and that of the biological knowledge. Now, one such good company is a molecular connection which is based in Bangalore. So, at molecular connections, what they do is they would try to bring you know, uh, curated data. And with this curated data, they would try to create databases for other pharmacological companies. Now, this is purely dry lab. Now, if an other company, something like Roche, Merck, Glenmark, Cipla, Biocon, Astra, AstraZeneca, GSK, Redis Lab, Ranbaxy, Reliance, all these companies, and I have also looked into, you know, Sun Pharma, wherein Sun Pharma is actually working a lot on a, a specialized domain, which is called as chem informatics. Now, under these particular companies, the first thing is, uh, as a BSc graduates, you know, there is no much trust which has been done. So hence, you can always enter these companies as an internee or with certain scholarships. But once you are in MTech or an MSc with data sciences or bioinformatics, so you can get a an initial position as clinical pharmacologist or a research data analyst. Now, if you are good with computers and coding, you can still go for as a programmer or a curator. Now, if you can understand chemistry well, and this chemistry of ligand molecule, if it is being translated into its bioactivity, then, you know, uh, a researcher in chem informatics would be one of the lucrative position and then followed by clinical data researcher, or very importantly, the higher position with a postdoc or a few years of experience, uh, the person would be entitled for specialist in drug design and development, or he could be called a scientist or a manager in structure activity relationship studies. With this, you would ask me, sir, what would be the approximate you know, salary package wherein a, a, a BSc or an BTEC or an MSc or an MTEC in bioinformatics would be offered? Now, this is just a, a pictorial representation, and uh, this might vary from company to company. But however, since in India, uh, bioinformatics is booming up, and looking into your proficiency and looking into what company you are actually entering in, so these are the various labs in which opportunities are being given in terms of their income. So in most of the cases for MTECs and the PhDs, if you are well versed, the salary would go somewhere between a slab of 43,600 and more if you and everything again depends on your knowledge and how best you can actually contribute through your knowledge onto the company. Or if you say uh, I am just a mediocre person and uh, you know I can just contribute uh, with more of biology and less of the coding component, then you know. Uh, certain governmental jobs directly offer you a salary of around 34,100 onwards. Or if you are not much proficient, if you are into the management component of it, so if you are into the support component of the bioinformatic uh, system, then uh, a salary of around 27,400 could be paid. And if you are just as a, a, a BTEC or if you are just an a BSc bioinformatics graduate, a salary somewhere uh, between 19 to 20,000 will be offered. And remember, this is just a, a, a tariff okay, or a, a slab which explains the, the salary distribution of bioinformaticians in India per month. 
Now, if nothing happens, I have no interest in academy, I have no interest in research, or, or you know, I have not gotten any opportunity in my company, in any of the companies. So I tell you, my dear friends, by any point of time, if the opportunity does not knock your door, at Biotechnica, what we believe is create a door. Okay, build your own door so that, you know, the world will see the entire premises with your door which has been built. Now, here comes a huge opportunity for entrepreneurs. We call them as bio entrepreneurs, wherein you can develop two major kinds of systems. Now, as a bioinformatics company, you can focus on the research services or you can focus on the R&D development of a given product. Now, in research services, you can give research services such as next generation sequencing processes or facility, or you can do certain chemi informatics for other companies. You can also look into computational biology. Cancer genomics is one of the major subject which has been booming up, and most of the hospitals are linking uh, uh, you know, their clinical data to that of cancer genomics. Then bioinformatics as a complete source or the complete package, you can still offer this particular uh, branch or the services. And then very importantly, epigenetics and data sciences, if you are very good with it. Now, when it comes to research and development, these are the three major booming areas in which you can actually invest your money. The first area is in terms of transcriptomics. The transcriptomics will talk about a gene expression whenever a drug is being given, whether the drug undergoes upregulation or downregulation, that component could be studied, which can actually help in drug design and development. Metabolome is what exactly is the metabolic regulation of an anabolite or catabolite could be observed using metabolome research or the, the next buzzing word which is going around is the microbiome. Now, with the microbiome, since we know that Every microbiome is unique for a given organ, you know, given organism. Say, for example, my microbiome is entirely different from the consortium of microbiome what you have in your gut. So, microbiome is again a, a, a important, you know, branch wherein there's a lot of scope. And then coming on to the pharmacogenomics. Now, pharmacogenomics is just booming and it is blossoming everywhere. In all pharma companies, they want to put in both you know, genomics and pharmacology together to develop something which is called as customized medicine. Now, with the word of customized medicine, so I want to highlight something on precision medicine. Precision medicine is everybody, maybe 10 years down the lane. Now, I cannot just go to a pharma and get any generic drug. A drug would be synthesized especially for the abnormalities, disorders or diseases which I am suffering. So an entire concoction or entire cocktail of a drug will be designed which can work at a genetic level with, with absolutely no effects, side effects or with you know um, very minimal side effects. This could be done and henceforth there's a lot of scope of uh, drug design and development. With this, what I want you people to understand is there are n number of opportunities. The only thing is you need to upgrade yourself. Now, if you are not upgrading yourself at that particular position, you can just enter, but you remain as stagnant. Then, you know, your job would start giving pressure rather than pleasure. So please make sure when you're doing a job, you have a pleasure of experience rather than the pressure experience, because only then when you can convert your hobbies to a job, and that job gives you flavor and that flavor gives you happiness. That is the meaning of, you know, uh, what we call it as settlement or that is the meaning of happiness. So with this, I would, I would thank you people for, you know, um, coming up and requesting for various kinds of videos. Uh, please remember at Biotechnica, we put up a lot of efforts to design the videos as per the requirement of our viewers. Now, upon looking at this video, if you feel that a particular specific kind of a domain has to be explained in much detail, please let us know in the comments so that in the next video we will try to design as per your requirement. At Biotechnica, what we believe is your achievement is our motivation and our success. Thank you very much.